Okay, so uh, like I said, today we want to see another way of creating our own functions, but these functions are very, very small functions and they do not have names. And this, so these functions are called what are known as Lambda functions. We use them a lot in Python and in this course in particular, because we have to type some function you have to tell some function which you're going to use for a particular thing you're trying to do. Most of the time, those functions you have to do a mathematical function or a mathematical expression. Translating it into Python, you're going to do that using lambda functions. So in this chapter, we want to see how to create a lambda function. Then after you create a lambda function, you want to see how you're going to call a lambda function. Then you're going to see how you're going to give it information using positional arguments. And also, it turns out lambda functions can accept keyword arguments. So we're going to see how to do that. Okay. Now, like I said, these lambda functions are very, very small, and they do not have a name. We don't. We do not create them the way you create your normal function by saying define. No, you don't do that. The only thing you do with a lambda function is you kind of create a variable which is going to store some stuff then you do this you say lambda you type lambda then the information which that function you're creating is going to need which are the arguments in this case then after that then you have a a colon then after the colon the expression which you are going to use is that clear Are we clear here? Yes. yes. So basically, very, very small stuff. But these things work magic. If you know how to use them properly, these things can save you a lot of time. Because most times when it comes to lambda function, you use them on very, very small, small functions. Okay. For example, let's create our first lambda function. So here, we start with well, for you to create a lambda function, of course, there has to be some kind of variable thing. Some kind of, it's not really the name of a function per se, but some kind of variable or which is supposed to hold the function. Okay? Is that clear? It's kind of like, it's not really a variable. It's not really the name of a function, but you can, it's easier if you take it as the name of the function. So here we want to say, we want to create a lambda function called square okay now then you put it an equal sign a uh, one equal sign then after the equal sign you tell python you want to create a lambda function okay so you type lambda like this as you can see it's blue and that means that this blue this word has got special meaning to python so it's a keyword then this square function you're trying to create is going to accept only one piece of information, which is the X. Is that clear? Are we clear? Kind of, kind of repeat there. The line was breaking. I'm saying with the Lambda, when you type Lambda like this, you're telling Python you want to create a Lambda function. Okay. Then after telling Python you want to create a Lambda function, you tell Python what what information it's, this function is supposed to expect. So in this case, the Lambda function is supposed to expect only one piece of information, which is the X. Okay? So you're going to give this square a value, and that value is going to be stored in X. So what should Python do with X? Well, Python is going to get the value of X, and it's just going to square it to the power 2, raise it to the power 2, and then you get a result. Is this clear? Yes. These are very, very short, these are very, very short functions. You tell Python, uh, you're creating a lambda function, then next you tell it what information, the parameters, what parameters or arguments is that function expecting? Is it one or two parameters? Then after that, what should Python, after the equal sign, after the colon, what is Python supposed to do with the X? 
So whatever value is supposed to, is, is you're given in the x, it's supposed to raise it to the power 2, which is just a square. Are we clear? Yes. Let us see how this works. Maybe you, that's when you probably you get a bit of more appreciation of what we have just done. So here, this square here, that's a lambda function. So I just say square, then I give it 2. So this 2 is going to be stored here. So the, the x is going to hold a value of 2. Then what is Python supposed to do with the value of 2? It's supposed to raise it to the power 2. So that's going to give you 4. And you get your 4. You see that? Yes. Then if we give the function square, we give it 5, the lambda 5, we give it 5. This 5 is going to be stored in x. Then what is Python supposed to do with that? This value of x is supposed to be raised to the power 2. So this one we expect a 25. Like that. Are you seeing how this is how it's how it's doing the stuff? Yes. This is the same square function we created earlier, but now we as you can see, we have created the same square function only in one line. Can you see this? We have created the same a function which does the same thing but now we have done it only in one line. Is this clear? Yes. Yeah. Of course, the name of the lambda should give you an idea of what it's doing. Like in this case, it's squaring things up. Okay, next we create this. You remember, you remember the subtract function from last night in the other class? Yes. Yeah. So yes. next we recreate that same subtract function, but this time with lambdas. Okay, with the lambda function. So we start the name of the lambda is subtract, then we put an equal sign, then we tell Python we want to create a lambda function. Okay. Then what is this lambda function? What pieces of information does it need? It's going to need the value of x, it's going to need the value of y, because you're trying to subtract two values, right? So you need a one value x, another value y. Then after you give it x and y, after the colon, now you explain how the Python is supposed to use this x and y. So basically the way if, if a value of x is provided and a value of y is provided, what it's supposed to do is just x minus y. So subtract y from x, like that. Is that clear? So if, if we run now this subtract, then 20 and 7, these are positional arguments. So this 20 is going to be stored in x. Then this y, 7 is going to be stored in y. So x is going to have a value of 20, y is going to have a value of 7. So x minus y, that should give you 13. You run that. You see? Is this clear? What's happening? Yes, it is clear. Yes. Yeah. So here you tell Python how much information this lambda function should expect. Then after the colon, you explain to Python, you tell Python how it's supposed to use the information that it has received. Similarly here, subtract 7, then comma 20. So the 7 as you can see, that's the first one. The 7 is going to be stored in x. Then the 20 is going to be stored in y. So x is going to have a value of 7. y is going to have a value of 20. So x minus, 20, x minus y here, that's going to be 7 minus 20. So here you expect minus 13. Is this clear? You could also do the following, say, subtract, okay, no, let, let me just leave that for a bit, that's for another thing, okay, you can also create another lambda called divide, 
So this one, this lambda code divide, it does exactly what it says to divide. So here, an equal sign, then you tell Python, you want to create a lambda function called divide, okay, fine. So what is, if you're going to create a lambda function called divide, then what does Python expect? Okay, you should expect a value of x and you should expect a value of y. So if it expects a value of x and expects a value of y, what is it supposed to do with this value of x and value of y? Well, this is what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to carry out an, an operation x divided by y. Then it gives you a result. Then you run that. So here we say divide 5, then 10. So this 5 is going to be stored in x. That's the first value, right? Then the 10 is going to be stored in y. So x is going to have a value of 5, then y is going to have a value of 10. Are we clear? Very clear. Mm -hmm. Then it carries out this operation here, x divided by y, that should give you, uh, what, 0.5. And that's what you get, 0.5. Then here, divide 10, then comma 5. So this 10 is going to be stored in x then the 5 is going to be stored in in y so your x is going to have 10 your y is going to have 5 then when it carries out this operation uh x divided by y that is basically 10 divided by 5 and that should give you 2. are you seeing how this thing how this thing is working yes these are very yes small lines of code but at the same time very 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 powerful small lines of code which are very very powerful at the same time are we clear yes okay now we have been using when you when you call a function like this just giving it numbers like that these are positional arguments that's what you've been using. That's what I've been calling them. The, the, the function uses the values depending on how they are, the order in which they're given. Okay? And as you can see with a function like divide, if 5 comes first, then 10 comes later, the answer is 0 0.5. If 10 comes first, then 5 comes later, the answer is 2.5. So for positional arguments, in certain functions, Depending on the order in which these arguments are given, the result is going to be different. Are we clear? Yes. Now, if you want to avoid this problem of results being different, if you want to avoid this problem, then you need to use what are known as keyword arguments. We used keyword arguments in that example of Kenneth Kaunder where we had a function called person. Those keyword arguments, because what we have created is actually a function, they also work. For example, subtract. The lambda subtract, you can say, you can explicitly say you want the value 20 to be stored in X, you want the value Y to be stored in, seven to be stored in Y. You can be explicit. So this way you get 13. Then here, if you explicitly start with say, you want, you start with y and you say 7 should be stored in y. Then later on you come to x and you say 20 should be stored in x. In this case you get 13 again because the order with keyword arguments, the order in which the information is given doesn't matter. You are explicitly saying that 20 should be stored in x, 7 should be stored in y. So whether this this thing comes first or the other comes later, it doesn't matter. Are we clear? Yes. That's yes. why it's very, very important when you are creating a function, you be as explicit as possible. And that means using passing information using keyword arguments. Then here, this divide, divide. So you, you explicitly say you want five to be stored in x then you want 10 to be stored in y if you explicitly say this with divide you get 0 0.5 then if you start with y but you explicitly say that 10 is supposed to be stored in y then 5 is supposed to be stored in x then you run that 
you still get the same answer 0 0.5 are we clear yes yes yeah so basically this is about this class of functions called lambda functions one line functions but at the same time very very powerful allowing you to actually do a lot of mathematics with these small small functions okay any questions so far so good all right uh, as usual uh, i have a policy of not introducing another topic after I introduce something so with the lambda functions that's why that's where they end okay so we'll be coming to an end the only other thing i wanted to dis discuss is what are we going to do tomorrow because my thursday evening has opened up so do we leave it the way it is or we put a class there Thursday. Remember Thursday? We had cancelled Thursday? Yes. So it has opened up. So do we leave it the way it is, remains cancelled, or we put something there? If I think, I think we can put something since we've not been doing something behind look. Okay, okay, fine. Then, mm -hmm. uh, with me, I'm okay. You are okay with it? Brian? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm okay with it. Okay. Then we're going to have a class tomorrow. So today we stop here. I don't want to introduce something new. Okay. So tomorrow what we're going to do is we're going to refresh. We're going to look at another class of functions called methods. Now these methods, we have met them before, but we're going to look at them fast, fast. I think hopefully we can look at the methods for lists and uh, tuples and also dictionaries in one hour. If we can finish in one hour, I'm going to be very happy about that. So that we, I, I really want us to move, to get rid of this Python very fast so that we can move on to other things, which actually, before you start getting bored, start thinking that this course is just Python. No, Python is the tool which you're going to be using. So that tool, we need to understand how it works and eventually how we're going to use it. Okay, so we've come to the end of this class. Uh, I've been, I, I sent you some email with uh, the PDFs and the notebooks. And after this class is done, I'm also going to send you an email with a PDF for this and also the, the notebook. And I'm go also going to upload the video of the same thing we're doing here to YouTube so that you can refresh yourselves if there's need to do that. Okay, so we've come to the end of the class. It was very short. Uh, me, I just didn't get what you, you were discussing. I, I logged in a bit late. No, you Over were, we, the three hours in a day, I don't Yeah, so eventually, after we are finished with the Python, we're going to restrict ourselves to only three hours in a week. Okay. Yeah. And those three no. hours, in my opinion, they can be moved to the weekend. Yes. Because I need to use uh, these same hours, this same time for first years. Okay. Yeah, because your the, the first years they really don't know anything, so we need to explain things to them. So I need to be meeting first years from twenty to twenty one hours, but it's not now. Maybe okay. next month. Maybe by the end of next month, depending on how we go with this with our thing here. Okay. Yeah. And then when else? When I was going through the, the 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 PDF you have sent is chapter chapter what? Because I think the last one that I have printed out is chapter six A. Yeah. Okay. No, I don't say something. So the one I've sent out is chapter seven A and seven uh, B. So so meaning chapter six has no B, or maybe I'm not having it. No, I don't think you're having it. Anyway, I'll try to do that also. But for now, I've sent 7A and B, then I will send 7C. So chapter 7 is done. Okay. Yeah. Because chapter 6, I thought you would.